Hey everyone, my name is Jared, and welcome back to your weekly church announcements. Before we get started, I just wanna say if you need any additional information on the things that I'm about to announce, or you missed one of them, you can always head to the Church Center app, click on the More tab, and click on This Week at Resonate, and that's gonna give you a list of all of the things that we've talked about and a couple of Save the Date events that we have coming up. So first off, at the end of the month, we are hosting an Overdose Awareness Candlelight Vigil. This is gonna be on Thursday, August 31st at 7 p.m., and if you're not sure what this is, it's just a candlelight vigil to raise awareness for overdose, and it's for anybody who has been affected by an overdose in any way. This candlelight vigil is gonna be facilitated by our 11th step leaders, Fred and Val Saiswirda. And what happens at these is just honoring those who go unseen, and that's the friends and family whose lives have been altered by an overdose. So if you or somebody that you know has had their life altered by an overdose, we ask that you would prayerfully consider coming. And if you do decide to come, please just wear purple and bring a photo of your loved one. And the following Tuesday on September 5th, we have our Woven Sisterhood. And this time, Woven Sisterhood is proud to present a message by Jessa Vandenberg called, How'd We Get Here? In this message, Jessa is gonna be speaking on a first-generation Christian's journey into the unknown. And Ladies, if you're not already, I would get excited for this message because Jessa is one of my good friends and I'm so excited to see what she has to pour into all of you. So put it on your calendars, Tuesday, September 5th at 7 p.m. And finally, we have our Grow Groups Season 3 launch happening later in September on the 24th. There's more info to come on this, but if you're interested in leading a Grow Group for this fall season, then you'll need to sign up for our Grow Group Leader Training if you haven't already been trained. And you can do this by going onto our website and finding the Grow Groups page. I'm super excited to see what Grow Group Season 3 has to offer for the church, all of the spiritual growth groups, and all of the more fun groups as well. If you've never been a part of a Grow Group, they're amazing and they help build community like nothing else in this church. So I would consider looking at them once they actually launch and joining one because they're a ton of fun and they help you on your spiritual journey. Anyways, that's all the announcements I have for you guys today. I will see you next week. Be blessed. Oh. Fun things to share in my heart today. Um, the first one, I want to just go through a couple things. One is that grow groups, when we launch grow groups, our heart for those groups would, that, would be that people within our church, their gifts, their talents, the things that they're passionate about would be able to start a group and invite people out to it. So that way community is built, but also discipleship is built. I have a slide behind me with a QR code, um, and this is what this QR code will take you to if you want to scan it. My heart for this session starting up at the end of September would be that people would be able to start groups that were focusing on discipleship. I know that we, I love fun groups, right? I think we had one of the funnest ones that I saw was we had one where a bunch of ladies were going out thrifting together just to different stores and connecting. I love the connecting side of it, but I would love to see some groups launch here at the church that were really discipleship focused and for new believers and for believers that maybe have been walking with Christ for a long time, but the heart is grow groups are discipling and community building. Does that make sense? Awesome. The next thing that I have for you guys is that in September we're gonna be launching the Blessed Life series. How many of you have actually listened to the Blessed Life series by Robert Morris? A majority of you. I've been going through them and they have been such a blessing to me. So we're going to be going through those teachings and this is what I want to encourage you. If you haven't gone through them, they will be an extreme blessing to you. If you've gone through them already, they're going to be a blessing to you. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to my heart um, real quick with this was I was at Target or Target parking lot waiting for my wife. She was doing a bunch of shopping in that whole plaza area. And uh, I was waiting and all of a sudden I saw a family that was up by where the highway is, uh, the stoplight. And the Lord spoke to me in a split second and said to me, I want you to go up and I want you to give towards that family because I want your kids to see a heart of generosity rising up within you. 
Amen? And so, yeah, thank the Lord. The Lord makes you look good, right? And so it was a good thing. I parked my car and I went up and I gave towards them. But I really feel like the teachings that we're going to go through, the Lord wants to cultivate a heart of generosity within us. In order to accomplish what he wants to do on this earth, we have to be kingdom focused. Amen? All right, and the last thing that I got for you guys before we jump into the message today is I have my baby boy, and I'm really excited about it. So we got a cute little picture of him right there. Aww. <laughs> I love him. So Hannah, um, the Lord promised her that she would make it to 36 weeks, and she made it to 37 on the dot. So we're praising the Lord for that. Awesome. I'm used to, in previous times when we have our kids, they've been in the hospital for a month, two months, because my um, previous two were in the NICU. And uh, this one, we actually get to enjoy our summer. This is awesome, because they were all born around the same time, so I'm not stuck in a hospital looking out at the sunshine. So, um, and so I'm just excited. I really feel um, like today is going to be powerful. I hope you came hungry today. I hope you came excited to receive and you didn't just come to warm up that seat, right? And so what would you just, would you guys just be willing to stand with me for a second and we're just going to pray together. I really feel like the Lord has something special prepared for today. Lord, we love you. We're here for you in our hearts. Lord, would you just do something in our hearts and allow us to burn for you, Lord? Would your love just overflow in this room? Would your presence be made known, Lord? And we're thankful. We are carriers of your Holy Spirit, and we get to reach a, a hurting and a broken generation, generations. And Lord, I just ask that we would not take this time for granted. I catch myself looking at my family pictures and go, man, I feel like I took that moment for granted. And Lord, would you teach us how to be believers that don't take things for granted? We see the opportunity in front of us. Our hearts are open and we come hungry today to receive what you want to do today. Our answer is yes to everything and all of the above. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and be seated. So we're going to be continuing um, a teaching that I did a month ago. It feels like time has been flying by. And so it has, and so I taught a message on fixing your affections. And if you haven't listened to that teaching, I encourage you to go by and listen to it. And so part two is what I'm going to be teaching today. And so I'm really excited. I feel like there was more in my heart that I wanted to share, and I have to be honest, I feel like I've been laboring pretty hard over this, spending a lot of time with the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do. So before I jump into this, I just wanted to thank Pastor Paul and Pastor Colleen for giving me this opportunity to share my heart today with you guys. I got to see them this week, and they're doing, a great, they're doing great. They're feeling refreshed and doing good together, and I got to have um, breakfast with Pastor Paul, so that was good. So we're jumping into Fix Your Affections Part 2, and I just want to do a quick review for you guys because I know there's probably a couple people that re probably don't remember everything that I said from my last teaching, right? I know you guys have like glue traps for minds, but I, I want to go through a quick overview of what we went through on Fix Your Affection. Um, the first part of this that I really want to hit is that the Lord feels affection from the things that you do. It, the, we're not worshiping an ideology. We're not worshiping a, a concept, Okay? We're worshiping a living and breathing God who loves to connect with his people and desires intimacy and relationship. That is why worship is so powerful because I've gone through worship like we just did where I'm kind of just thinking about 15 other things and then before you know it, the whole thing's done. But I've also had moments of worship where my heart has just been poured out and I knew in that moment, I just had a supernatural peace and I knew in that moment I connected with the heart of the Father. Does that make sense? And so everything we do is out of devotion for him. Matthew 5, 8 says this. This was in our review. Blessed are the pure at heart for what? What will happen? They will see God. And so I talked about purity being free from dirt, free from defilement, free from pollution. It's somebody whose motives and heart posture and actions and principles are pure. And the heart posture is this. A person with a pure heart is the one that goes at the end of the day, the only thing I want is you, Lord. That's the only, this is the motivation behind why I do, the makeup behind why I do what I do. Does that make sense? What I'm sharing sounds really, really, really simple until you take a step back and you start realizing it's not as simple as it seems, 
right? We start to find things that motivate us and drive us to action only to find out that the motivation behind why we're doing things isn't just simply him, right? And so when Christ comes back, he's coming back for a pure bride. And what that means is a bride that's heart posture and affection and the desire of her heart. The bride is the church, but the heart posture and the desires of the, and the affections of the bride's heart are for the bridegroom to come. And she wants him the same way when a bride walks out, everybody turns and looks at the bride. And the only thing that that groom or the, the husband is, is doing is staring at her bride. He's like, I love everybody here, but that's the one I'm after, right? The purity of his heart and the purity of our heart as a church is going, we are the bride of Christ, and when he steps into the room, the only thing I want is you, Lord. You guys with me? It's quiet today. Good morning. (laughs) I hope you came prepared. I really do. And so that's the review of what we're going through. And so this message, I wanted to set the stage. This message is more of the surgery. Okay? Everybody said yay. Yay. Yeah, (laughs) I got you talking. Now you're like, wish I wasn't talking. Yeah. And so this message is really how do we posture our heart? What do we need to do behind the scenes? Relationship and intimacy in a marriage doesn't come by accident right? As, I, as I'm married to Hannah, there's, and Jacob mentioned it, there's a continual progression of me pursuing her that dumps romance and intimacy and compassion and love on our relationship. I can't just get married to somebody and then be like, okay, we're in the same house, now what? Right? It's, an, it's the affection of our heart, and I'm continually choosing to pursue the person that's in front of me. You guys with me? And so we cannot expect to carry a love and affection for the bridegroom with little commitment. And so our heart pasture has to be, how do I steward this affection? News flash to everybody here. I'm sharing something that everybody in here knows. But I, why did I write this message? I wrote this message because your affection is under attack 24-7. There's a hundred things pulling at your affection. There's programs and apps being made that are on your phones right now and websites that are made, and they want to channel and hold your affection and your attention as long as they possibly can. You hear me? And they, they've done studies, and they've p- paid millions and billions of dollars to make sure that you are stuck on that phone or that device or that TV show for a long, long time. And if we're not careful... We find that our relationship and our love for Christ is almost mundane. We feel like our love for Christ, he he becomes a part of us. Of course I'm thankful. Of course I love him. But then at the same time, we feel like in the back, in, in the core of who we are, we know that something's off. Because I want to encourage you, church, that there is a battle for our affection. And if we don't steward our hearts correctly, what happens is, is our affection is spread out. And when really we were, call- we were called to be a bride that eagerly desired and was excited for his return and his coming back. Amen? And so why is it important to guard your heart? We're not going to go into reading the parable of the sower, but I want to just paint this picture because it's very, very, very important, okay? When Jesus taught the parable of the sower, he taught about four different soils, right? And there's all these different soils. In this parable specifically, if you look up in Mark 4, just go through. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so if you look at these four soils, this parable teaches us a couple different things, okay? Okay? The first one that it teaches us is that there's seed being thrown, right? And the seed represents the word. So God is distributing the word the same way that you're sitting in your chairs right now listening to me. The word is being sown. We're going to go through scripture today. We're going to go through a lot of stuff today. You might even leave inspired today. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) But I want to tell you something. Whether you're inspired or not, isn't the determining factor of the success. The, de- determining, de- the determining factor of the success of this message is whether or not you take what's being distributed, you hold on to it, and you guard it with everything inside of you. 
right? And so I went to the Philippines a long time ago with Hannah, and they warned us this service is going to be light. We're outside. It's supposed to rain tonight. And the Philippines had this mindset. The people in the Philippines had a mindset that if they were outside in the rain, there was an infection that would happen in your lungs. So they were in fear that if I stepped outside and I went here, that it was actually going to cause bron- you know, bronchitis or something. So I can't remember the specific condition, but the, it was hilarious because when the service started in the Philippines, the whole place was packed out, and it started raining. And we're like, oh, here we go. It's going to get light. And the coolest thing was out of about 200 people standing there coming from all their different, I'm thinking barangays, yeah, villages, but all the different places, they stayed and only a couple people left. And I was so impressed. And j- listen to me, you look at it, that was just in awe. Like, oh my goodness, look at the devotion of these people willing to stay, even though there's this big fear that this is going to happen. They're going, I don't care, and I want him. That's the reason that I'm here, okay? But here's the deal. Just because they stood out in the rain doesn't mean that there's fruit that comes. It's a determining factor. Just because you receive the word doesn't mean that you're going to reap the harvest that God intended you to reap through the word, okay? Some of you are looking at me like, where are you going with this brother, Right, And so there's four soils that Jesus communicated in, and the soils have to do with the soil of our heart. You hear me? And so the way, I want to go through the four. The first one is the wayside. It's the people that hear, but the devil comes immediately to destroy and steal that word that was planted. You were confused, and you said, you know what, I don't think this makes sense, but that's okay, I'm going to move forward, and whatever. Say law. I was looking at a Bible verse with Hannah yesterday, which was hilarious because I wrote this whole message. And she, like, we read the same Bible verse, and she goes, oh, that's so good. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Help me out here. <laughs> right? Help me out. I'm not getting it. She's like, no. It, she started to explain it to me. I'm like, oh, I got it. And I started like telling her what I got from it. She goes, no, you totally missed it. <laughs> It's not what that's saying. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, explain it to me one more time. And then she explained it to me the third time, and finally I was like, I got it. We're good. I'm on the same train. Took you one time, took me three times. Praise the Lord, right? And so when, when the word is distributed, and you're in your Bible time, or you're coming to church, or you're hanging around in fellowship with believers, and you're hearing things that inspire you, Understand that the devil's heart is to come and steal the things that are sown that you don't understand. When does he come? Talk to me. When does the devil come? Immediately. So everybody say immediately. He comes immediately. Let me tell you what that tells me. That communicates to me that there is deep value on what he's out to steal. Because anytime I do something immediately, it means there's value behind it. There's priority, thank you. And so the first one is the person that doesn't understand, it's sown on the wayside, the ground is packed down, and there's not, the seed isn't able to get into the soil to produce what it wants to produce, and it ends up being stolen, or the parable says the birds of the air come and eat it. The second one is the rocks. They hear and receive the word with joy, but they take no root in themselves, and then what happens? All of a sudden persecution comes, or trial comes, and it steals the word, from the believer, or from whoever, okay? So you heard it, you got excited about it, you're like, oh, that just wrecked me, and then the next week you totally forgot about it, and it never was something that you sat on and you meditated with and enjoyed, it's just something you kind of just had in the moment and you let go, okay? And then all of a sudden persecution comes. It's funny how when you get a deep revelation about something, how much happens behind the scenes that counterdicts the revelation that you feel like you got, right? All of a sudden you're encountering God's love and all of a sudden the trials in your life just seem like they get turned up more and more and more. Maybe it's just me. (laughs) Right? Good morning. Hi. Right? I'm not here to just talk at you. I I want us to go through this as a family right now. This is going to be really powerful. I'm, I'm really feeling like the Lord wants to do something here. So stay with me. And so it's important it's important for us to realize that there's, there's a battle going on and the condition of our heart matters. I wrote this down. Many people hear the word, but the heart determines the result. Okay? 
Your heart determines what you're going to get out of it. So now we have the rocks. They hear with joy, but they take no root in themselves. And then the temptation comes and they fall away, right? Be careful. Listen to me. Be careful what you embrace in temptation and persecution. When the church doesn't see the results that the church desired to see, you have an option to lower your standard below what the word of God promised. Be careful with that, okay? You hear my heart in that. When you see things not go according to the standard of what you expect, you be careful of how your heart posture is because what you might be producing is rocky ground. And it's really hard. As I saw you in here. Harry and I spent a lot of time working on a farm. And Harry didn't do this. I'm sure you've had plenty of experience in this. But one of my jobs working for Harry was we would go out into the field and prep the field by taking all the rocks out. Everybody said, amen. Well, maybe just me. (laughs) Okay? And so understand the rocks are the things in our heart where the minute something happens, something rises up, it's like, ah, I'm not really sure if I can really believe what the word says in this area, be careful with that church. The next one is the thorns, okay? This is, again, another soil of the heart, the thorns. It means, what happens is you get choked by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of of this life, and because of it, it brings no fruit. This is what Mark says, the desires of other things, right? If my affection is gonna be protected and channeled a specific way, How many know that my desires cannot be wrapped up in different things? I'm not asking you to be Amish, but I'm asking you to be aware. How how serious are you about carrying a heart of the kingdom? How much is good enough for you? That's the question that's been going on. I'm just going to share this. It's not my notes, but I, I really, I've been... I've been more focused and determined to just pursue Christ harder in this season than I've ever pursued him. If you were to look at my track history for the past year, you look and go, well, yeah, you're, in, you're doing Bible studies, you're in the word, you're in church, you're, you're devoted. I, in my opinion, you're devoted. But in this season, I've been very, very careful about what I expose my mind to, my heart to, and what I attach my affections to. Okay, And what I'm experiencing in this sense, in this stage of my life, is something I've never experienced before. I've ex- my heart is literally on fire the minute that I set my affection towards him, and I feel this overwhelming burning in my chest. And it's, it's not congestion. <laughs> we can laugh this morning, right? I've had congestion and heartburn before. That's not what I'm experiencing, Right? But I, I'm serious, when, when you channel in and you fix your eyes, the disciples said, didn't our hearts burn within us? I Meaning when, when I was with him, it wasn't just another man talking. My heart felt like fire inside of me. And I'm feeling like this season I've been very, very careful about what I've been exposing myself to. And the result is I've felt like I've been falling more in love with Christ than I ever have. And so we have, I'm just going to go through these quick, the wayside, the rocks, the thorns, which are the desires coming in to choke. In the good ground are those, this is the last soil, which is the good soil. Good soil. The good soil is, are those who, having heard the word with a noble heart, they keep it, they bear fruit with patience. Everybody say Patience. <laughs> Isn't that a fun word? So good. Somebody said no. <laughs> right? And patience, keeping your heart. I know what the word says. I'm not backing down. I'm holding on to it. I know what the word says. I'm not backing down. I'm holding on to it. I know what the word says. I'm not backing down. I'm holding on to it. How many promises are we willing to fight for? Let me tell you something. Here's what I do know. Here's my personal conviction. If we're not willing to fight for the word, you will never experience the fruit of the word. So we can either choose to fight for it or choose not to fight for it, but your patience determines whether or not you will see the harvest in this situation. Okay? And so when our affections are into the desires of this world and the things going on and the offenses that we take and all these things, be careful where your mind and your heart wander. 
because there, it's very important that you're stewarding a heart of compassion and empathy and affection towards him. He feels, I'm going to just throw this in there, he feels affection by how you steward your heart. He does. He feels affection by how you steward your heart, and we'll get into that in a second. So I want you to realize there's a, a war going on. And so I, I, here's the next piece that I want to share about the parable of the sower. When, when I've read that, I've looked at it and go, okay, good. The word, God spreads the seed, the seed is the word, the, and, you know, and this is the enemy comes to steal. If we're confused, he comes, recognize the enemy was only in one soil. And, you know, yeah, he goes and do, I want you to look at this whole parable completely different. I want you to look at it like the person that you care about the most in your life, the person that you want to spend eternity with has just spoken something to you. And there's a war going on to steal what he said. The person that your soul and your heart longs to be with for eternity said something, and there's a war going on to steal what was placed in your heart. That should scare us and cause us to action, right? And so let me tell you something. If Hannah were to say something to me and somebody was in my ear going, you can't really trust her. You can't really trust. No. Did you remember what happened that one time when she did that one thing? Do you remember that? Anybody hear that? It's funny how we hear that. You can't really, you can't really trust that. You can't really trust him in this area. You can't, if somebody were to talk to Hannah or talk to me about Hannah like that, what do you think I'd do? I'd be like, shut up. And sometimes we need to be bold and take our thoughts captive. Don't be conformed to the image of this world and go, you know what? I don't care what you say because for me, I'm listening to the voice of the person I get to spend the rest of my life with. Come on. And I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to fight for it. And Jesus said in this, this parable, he said, if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand the rest. That communicates how important is us for believers to, to take care and steward the garden of our heart. Suki has a garden. Is it a pain sometimes to take care of your garden? Oh, yeah. I got three tomato plants, and it feels like a pain to me. I only got three. I walked out. I've been putting miracle Grow on them, and it's like, shh. I walked out. The thing's like this tall, and the thing keeps getting bent over. I can't keep up. It's growing so fast. The top of them just keeps caving over. I keep stringing it up. I mean, let me tell you something. It's going to take effort and work on our part. We like results where it's like, Lord, have your way. And he goes, it's your heart. Right? He goes, are you going to protect it? Do you value me enough to fight for your affection to be channeled towards me? Right? Oh, I feel the Lord right now. Do you value me enough to fight for your affection to be geared solely towards me? Okay? And so we're going to go through Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, classic verse, but I want to just enforce the importance of us doing this. Proverbs 4, 23, and this is out of the Passion Translation. It says, so above all, somebody say, above all, importance right there. Above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are, and pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. Avoid dishonest speech, pretentious words. Be free from using perversive words no matter what. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Looking straight ahead, ignoring life's distractions. Sounds like parable of the sower. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth, and the road will be safe and smooth for you. Let me tell you something. When we talk about, this is a verse that many believers know, but when we talk about guarding our hearts, our heart is our thoughts, our will, our desires, and our affections. That's what we're guarding. It's funny to me because as a parent, I'm, uh, as a parent I fight for my kids and what they're exposed to. I'm like, uh-uh. Commercial comes on, I'm watching it like a hawk making sure that my kids aren't exposed to things at their young age that I don't want them to be exposed to, right? It's funny because you bring kids around anybody and all of a sudden, they're like glue sticks. They just catch and everything sticks to them. What do you say? My wife warned me, if you say the word booty to your four-year-old son, you will never go a day without hearing that word. And I, I seriously, I looked at her, I'm like, there's no way. 
I'm like, it's just a word. He's, I said it, he laughed hysterically, and then for the rest of my life, I've heard it at least eight times a day, every day. They're like glue sticks, right? And so it's important, it's important for us as believers because we go, ah, oh, it doesn't really matter. It's not really sticking to me. It's not really sticking. Why do we take such good care of our children, but with our hearts, we're more free? Why, well, I I, Taylor, I understand the truth. I understand what the word says, right? And there is grace. I'm not talking about you losing your righteousness. You are righteous because of what Christ has done. What I am talking about is, yes, you are righteous, but yes, your affections towards him and your heart posture towards him matter. That's why the church in Revelations lost their first love. Their affections went into doing and not into, I'm doing because of him. Okay? And so, why do we fight so hard for our children, but yet with us, we're like, well, I could watch that movie, or I could watch that show, or I could go through and watch those reels that, you know, I just like to spend time. It's quiet in here. Hi. Hi. Maybe it's just my conviction, right? Maybe it's just me. Let me tell you something. If you want a heart purely devoted to him, it's going to cost you something, church. It's going to cost you something. And the surrender is the most beautiful thing that you will ever do because at the end of it, you experience him, okay? And so I want to jump into another one. Matthew 24, 12 says this. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Going King James Version on you guys this morning, right? Because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. This was Jesus talking about the end times. Listen very closely because we're going to go through this point quickly. When they made, this is imagery, wax cold is original imagery in this wording where they would literally dip candles in wax to form them, and it would be a process over time where they would continually dip a candle in the wax to the point where the candle was formed. And now Jesus is going, be careful, because the iniquity in the world around you is getting turned up, the affection and the love is getting turned down. You hearing me? And so if you're not careful, what will happen is the same way wax builds up on a candle, your heart will lose its affection, lose its desire, lose its love, lose its purpose, and you might just forget why you started in the first place loving him. I was crazy when I first, I was, the Lord was taking me on a journey. I, as a new believer, I hated that I couldn't understand the word. I literally wrote out the Old Testament five times, right? The, I, the first five books of the Bible. I wrote out the first five books of the Bible because I just, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. I would read it and lose it, read it and lose it. And then I, I'd like, Taylor, did you even write the genealogies? I even wrote out the genealogies because I was in love, Right? I'm like, I'm going to get it eventually. I don't think I got it. (laughs) But I did it. I mean, you have the tenacity and the fight that we have to have to hold on to the word. Be careful because if you were not careful and our affections are geared towards other things, our love gets gets wax cold. But look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living and active. Come on, somebody. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intents of our heart. Right? I don't like reading the word. It makes me feel uncomfortable. That's because it's piercing (laughs) something. (laughs) Everybody said? I like hearing your voices. Piercing. What does it pierce? It, when you open up the word, it's looking at, it's revealing your heart to you like you're looking in a mirror and revealing why you do the things that you do. Makes me feel uncomfortable. Makes me sleepy at night. That's because you're exhausted because you're having something revealed to you. Well, here's the beautiful thing about it. What is it revealing? It's, it's setting you up to pursue Christ be, out of pure compassion and love for him. It wants to strip back all the reasons that we do what we do to be focused in solely on him. I thought he'd be a lot more excited about that point than he were. I know you're listening. But listen, listen. 
I'm going to allow something to pierce me. This is when, in the strongest concordance when it talks about the words living, active, sharper. This is what it says. It, it, you might have a love or a sibling that's not pursuing Christ and their heart might be waxed. But listen, it's powerful. When it says active and sharper, that word sharper in the original language means it's like a two-piece imagery. It has a picture of a dull blade and a picture of a sharp blade. And it goes, if you knew how sharp the blade of the word was, it only takes one slice to cut through and pierce the deepest and the darkest heart. That's powerful. Come on. That's the power of the word. So we have to make sure we allow his word to pierce us. That our cares aren't wrapped up in the world, but wrapped up in him. The next thing that we have is Colossians 3.2. This is pulling back. Again, the sermon's about setting your affection. So a Colossians 3.2 says this, Set your affection on the things above and not on the things of this earth. That word, to set your affections, used 34 times by Paul in the New Testament. So it's important. 34 times, and this is what he's trying to get across. He, it, the word literally means to exercise the mind. The minute I say exercise, you're like, Ugh! right? Because it requires something. That's what I'm getting at. You start looking at this, and it requires something from me. He goes, I want you to exercise your mind, and if you're exercising your mind and you're disciplining yourself, you're, what you're going to experience is your affections are going to be channeled towards him, and you're going to encounter his love in a deeper way. I remember I used to listen to like, God, like the scriptures say, God so loved the world, and I used to look at that and go, man, I like what it says, but it doesn't move me. And now when I read it, after serving the Lord for 15 years, I read through the scriptures about his love and my heart just burns inside of me because I've encountered it. I've seen people encounter his love. It's powerful. There is nothing more powerful than the love that God has, the real love that God has and who he is. And so I'm going to, again, Colossians says, I'm going to need to set my affections. I need to exercise my mind. And the affection is not necessarily this tender feeling that I have for someone. It's focusing and not conforming to the world standards around me. Look at this in 2 Chronicles um, chapter 12, verse 14. It's, it says, He did evil because he had not set his heart on seeking the Lord. And those who do not fix their heart on the things of God in advance of problems will succumb to temptation. And so I want to just jump to another one. Psalms 19. This is David's heart. I love this. I've been soaking in this all week this week. Psalms 19 says this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Right? When we, talked, when we looked at what the life of Jesus when he came in, remember the Pharisees were the ones they were saying, stay with me, stay with me. I know the band's walking out, but stay with me. This is important. <laughs> right? Stay with me. When, the, when Jesus walked this earth, the Pharisees thought they had it all together. They were walking around saying, I'm doing all this stuff. I haven't broken the law. I haven't done this. I haven't stolen anything. I haven't committed adultery. I haven't done all these things. And Jesus goes, no. He points to a deeper standard. He goes, no, listen, if your heart even lusts after someone, you've committed adultery. So we think the law is the standard. But understand the standard that Jesus set, if you can get past, I mean, the severity, like, hold on a second. He wants our hearts, church. He wants our hearts. I got two rights and amens. Think about this. He wasn't after outward obedience. Yes, outward obedience is important. He was after a heart that was passionate, and because their hearts were passionate, the outward obedience followed. Okay? And so with thinking about this, David said, let the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Let's think about that for a second. What does it look like for the meditation of our heart to be acceptable to the Lord? That's a scary thought. Think about this for a second. Whatever I think about, whatever I'm fixing my affections on, the parable of the sower, all these things, 
I'm setting it on you. I want my heart to be channeled in. And even the thoughts that I have, I'm sure I'm the only person, but you ever just meditate on something until you're angry? This side, you guys are all set. You're good? Yeah, I mean, you ever just meditate on something that just ends up just ruining your whole mood? It's actually kind of surprising how easy it is to do that. But I want to just encourage you that if we're willing to step back and actually guard our hearts and protect the word that God's trying to bring to us, don't allow anything to just come in. Guard the affections of your heart. Allow the meditation of your heart to be pleasing to him. Why do I guard my heart? Why do I take my thoughts captive to what? What am I taking my thoughts captive to? Everything. Take my thoughts captive to everything. In obedience to who? To him. That's why I do it. Why? Because the love that I experience and that I have for him is so valuable to me. I'm not letting anybody step in. It's a picture of marriage covenant, people. It's, I mean, it's a picture. I'm not letting anything that comes into my marriage stain or take me away from the heart that I have towards my wife. I will fight to my last breath to protect that relationship that I have. I have made a covenant, and I haven't just made a covenant. I care about that woman. And I will do anything to fight for her. And at the same way, we have to step back and go, how many things have I allowed to come into my covenant that I made with him to take me away from his heart? Come on, would you just pray with me? Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your righteousness. Thank you that our sin gets separated as far as the east is from the west. Lord, would you teach us how to have hearts that just burn for you, that are excited about pursuing you with everything we have inside of us. As the iniquity of the world gets turned up, Lord, let our affection burn for you. We choose to allow your word to pierce us, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it hurts. We choose to allow us to be pierced and so that our hearts are fashioned to just be solely surrendered to you. We love you, Lord, and we're so thankful for everything that you're doing in us as a church and as individuals. I have it on my heart. I feel like there's just a couple people that just saying, you know what, I'm done living the path that has been laid out in front of me. I'm done choosing to do the wrong things. And you want to give your life to Jesus right now. If you're in this room with eyes closed, head bowed, and you want to give your life to Jesus, would you just do me a favor? Would you raise your hand so I can pray over you? Just raise it nice and tall. I want to pray over you in the service. I see your hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Would you guys just pray this with me? Say, dear Jesus, I love you. I choose to live for you all the days of my life. I choose to let you pierce my heart, cleanse my heart, and drive me to love all the days of my life I choose to put you first and I give my heart to you and I give my life to you in Jesus name Amen Amen